Entering the veil Entering the veil It's the bread of adversity We made the whole What do you do when you realize the world's so cold? There's a path called righteousness But it's little but snares Approach with caution and we feel It's got chance to break Falling away Got us going astray We in the valley of decision Help us find our way When we were destroyed for a lack of knowledge How can that be? Mama spent 30 grand on Greatness, but truth is like a gym hidden in the field, it's evasive. Who will prevail to open up the book? Who will exhale into the veil and take a look? To those that have an ear, let them hear. Blindness and part is happening to us, but clear vision is near, man. We are entering the veil. Take hold, we are entering the veil. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to Entering the Veil. The veil represents the separation between the holy and the most holy. Although the veil was torn in two, a separation still exists to this day due to our falling away from the sound doctrine originally delivered unto us via the Holy Bible. What this means is there is now a spiritual veil over the eyes and ears of the general public, causing a separation where none should exist. We are committed to helping guide as many people as possible along the spiritual path of entering the veil. Shalom. Welcome to Entering the Veil. Today's topic is called the Gentiles and the engrafting. Throughout time, we have heard of Noah building an enormous ark which brought him and his family with every animal through the great flood that flooded the whole entire earth. Noah had received grace from Elohim because he walked perfect before him, but everyone else did that which was evil continually before Yahweh. Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 through 8 and Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. The earth also was corrupt before Elohim, and the earth was filled with violence. And Elohim looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And Elohim said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now thousands of years after, up to this very day, a lot of us have seen this bow in the sky during or after the rain clouds are around, which we call the rainbow, not knowing that this colorful bow that we see is a covenant, a promise left behind for us to see and for Yahweh to remember that he would not destroy mankind with water as he did before. Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 through 15. And Elohim spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, 
This is the token of the covenant, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Many times in life we see so many things that pass our eyes and even heard something but not knowing what it was truly all about. Elohim has given us a great book which has recordings of himself and how mankind is supposed to live. But we chase those things which the nations have created and because they rule now we buy into those things, being distracted from what is more valuable. Vanity, lies, violence, and the lust of the flesh have us believing in lies. When the first judgment came upon the earth, only eight survivors made it through that destruction. Only four males and four females made it out of the flood on the entire earth only eight survivors. A lot of us say we love Yahweh, but many of us don't read to know how serious he is about having peace with all men, if possible, by keeping his commandments. Genesis chapter 8 verses 15 through 19. And Elohim spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, you and your wife and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring forth with you every living thing that is with you, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. So the repopulation of mankind on the earth started all over again with the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Genesis chapter 10 gives you the division of the nations and their generations also the countries they lived in. By searching the names of the sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, we found out who the true Africans are, who are truly the Gentiles, and who are the chosen nation of Israel, which is supposed to be a kingdom of righteous priests, but have fallen to the ways of the nations, and have forgotten their Elohim, who has always had a master plan. You may have heard of some people saying that if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile, like all nations that are not Jews are Gentiles. But actually, the Gentiles came from one of Noah's sons called Japheth, not from Shem or Ham, Noah's other two sons. Everyone then that is not a Jew cannot be called a Gentile then, can they? Because the Gentiles came from the seed of Japheth only. Genesis chapter 10 verse 5 it's written that the land of the gentiles came from japheth in luke chapter 18 verse 31 through 33 yeshua was talking to the 12 apostles telling them that he is going to be delivered up to the gentiles which shall put him to death luke chapter 18 verses 31 through 33 then he took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on, 
and they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Matthew chapter 27 verses 1 through 2. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yahshua to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. In Luke chapter 18, it's written that the Messiah is supposed to be delivered up to the Gentiles. While reading Matthew's chapter 27, it clearly adds more information on who the Gentiles are because it gives you the name of the governor, Pontius Pilate, who they delivered the Messiah up to, to be put to death. And Pontius Pilate is a Roman, which are a seed from the Gentiles. For the death of the Messiah to have taken place, he had to be offered up to the Gentiles because they were the ruling nation. Therefore, the Gentiles, the Romans in that time, had to give the okay for someone to be put to death. Reading Genesis chapter 10 and researching the sons of Noah, you can find some information on the genealogy of some of the sons. For instance, the sons of Japheth, like Magog, Gog, Tarshish, and Gomer. You can find information on them being the Russians, the Germans, and those that are from Spain. There are many people that are following some of the commandments written in the scriptures, having an understanding in some things, but some are led by the blind, which can't see but are still teaching. But you have people who would rather serve the creature than our Creator. We do have other Israelites that are teaching the words of Yahweh, but they are beating the nations down with the words of Yahweh, which is not right behaving like no other nation shall know Yahweh, nor see the kingdom, or even come to his holy mountain. It is clearly written that all nations shall come to Yahweh's holy mountain. Then you have some Israelites that degrade the Gentiles, like some Gentiles have not or will not accept the words of Yahweh, which some already have. Isaiah chapter 2 verses 1 through 3. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come you, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the Elohim of Yaakov, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. When we hear the word Jerusalem, a lot of us right away think of the Holy Land. Plenty of us don't think of the past of Jerusalem, Israel when a people called the children of Israel had lived there. But because of their disobedience against their Elohim, they were kicked out, but were promised to be brought back. First, they were to receive the curses of disobedience, then receive the blessings of salvation. Some of us may have heard of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Bible, how Abraham became the father of many nations, not all nations on the earth, but the father of many. Jacob had 12 sons, which became the children of Israel. A prophecy was then given to Abraham of Yahweh. Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 through 16. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation 
whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Promises were made to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. This is what was said of Yahweh to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22 verses 15 through 18. And the angel of Yahweh called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, says Yahweh, for because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is Yahweh saying this, not man, that all nations of the earth shall be blessed by Abraham's seed. Let's see who Abraham's seed are. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 through 15, Yahweh appeared unto Jacob to tell him the same thing, that by his seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed, which are the children of Israel. If all the families of the earth should be blessed by Jacob's seed, would it not be smart to know who this seed is? Abraham was already told in the vision that his seed was going to be captives unto a nation for 400 years in Genesis chapter 15. These are the curses that the children of Israel, the so-called African Americans, were supposed to go through. Being that many people don't read the Old Testament, the so-called Negroes fail to see what their heritage is. So they continue to follow the ways of the nations and not their own. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 32 through 33. Your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in your hand. The fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which you know of not eat up and you shall be only oppressed and crushed always. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 36 through 37. Yahweh shall bring you and your king which you shall set over you unto a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods, wood and stone. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Yahweh shall lead you. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 41. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you shall not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 64 through 66 and verse 68. And Yahweh shall scatter you among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall you find no ease, neither shall the sole of your foot have rest. But Yahweh shall give you there a trembling heart and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mine, and your life shall hang in doubt before you. And you shall fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of your life. And Yahweh your Elohim shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. 
and no man shall redeem you. No other nation on this earth can say they were sold unto a nation to be captives for 400 years than the so-called African Americans. Which nation on earth can say they truly went through the curses which are written in Deuteronomy like the children of Israel did? There has always been a reason for the so-called Negroes to be sent to America by ships. It was already written in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. The so-called Negroes are to return back to Israel and take their place as a kingdom of priests and to teach the nations also. You have some people who believe that the children of Israel were cast away. Let's read what Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11 verses 1 through 5. I say then, has Elohim cast away his people? Elohim forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Elohim have not cast away his people which he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says of Elias? How he makes intercession to Elohim against Israel, saying, Yahweh, they have killed your prophets and dig down your altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what says the answer of Elohim unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. The children of Israel, which are the so-called Negroes, cannot be cast away. Yahweh made a promise to their forefathers, plus they have a great duty that is expected of them. Yahweh has always had a remnant of Israel all over the world who realize who they truly were. So the written word of Yahweh can continue to be told. Romans chapter 9 verses 1 through 5. I say the truth in the Mashiach. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Elohim and the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came who is over all. Elohim bless forever. Amen. Reading Romans chapter 9 verse 1 through 5, it shows you who the Messiah came for and what the Israelites are supposed to be about. If the Israelites, which are the so-called Negroes, are the ones that are supposed to do the service of Elohim and to give the laws, why would I learn how to get salvation from any other nation? when it's the Israelites that are supposed to do the service of Elohim. Romans chapter 11 verse 4 speaks of the 7,000 men that Elohim said he has reserved that didn't bow to Baal. Of that 7,000, there has always been a remnant to spread the truth of Yahweh. Majority of the so-called Negroes may not know their true heritage but the remnant of the reserved will spread the truth of Yahweh. Understand though Israel, not only the Israelites are going to be blessed, but also the nations that are left through the great tribulation that is going to take place through prophecy. I know throughout history the Gentiles, or you may want to call them the Europeans have been a nation without law, but some Gentiles by faith have walked in the laws not all were of a corrupted mind. Acts chapter 10 verses 1 through 15. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared Elohim with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Elohim always. He saw in a vision 
evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of Elohim coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Adonai? And he said unto him, Your prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Elohim. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell you what you ought to do. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheep knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Adonai, for I have neither eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What Elohim has cleansed, that call not you common. Peter thought on the vision that he received from Elohim, but it was later the next day when Peter realized, and not only Peter, but those who followed him, that it was not the animals that Elohim had cleansed. It was a Gentile, a man. Acts chapter 10, verses 28 through 29. And he said unto them, You know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Elohim have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I ask therefore, for what intent you have sent for me? Now Peter said it was unlawful for a Jew to keep company with another nation. But Elohim showed him that he should call no man common or unclean. Well, the vision that he received with the unclean animals was a dream of an unclean man, which Elohim had made clean. If Elohim feels that way towards the Gentiles, or any other nation in fact, should anyone go against Elohim's words? So Peter said the right thing. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 through 35 and 45. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that Elohim is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we can see, if Elohim is not a respecter of persons, then who are we to be gainsayers? It was our Creator, who is mightier than us, who has allowed someone from another nation to receive the Holy Ghost and become clean. The words of Yahweh are not just for Israel anymore, but for those who accept the fact of becoming spiritual Israel. Though Israel is supposed to teach the word of Yahweh, other nations can be cleansed and renew their walk. In Romans chapter 11 verse 13, Paul speaks of being the apostle of the Gentiles, sent to the Gentiles. This is what Paul also said in 
Romans chapter 3, verses 29 through 30. Is he the Elohim of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one Elohim, which shall justify the circumcision, Jews, by faith, and the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, through faith. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. If we are looking forward to living forever in peace, first we must understand how to get close to the creator of all things. We must worship Elohim in spirit and in truth. Though Israel have received promises from Yahweh, it is spiritual Israel that shall possess the kingdom. Also, those of the other nations who also want salvation has to grab on to the skirt tail of a true Jew. For by one nation, one seed, shall the nations of the earth be blessed. Shalom. Welcome to Entering the Veil. My name is Isaac Ben Israel, and this is the Watchman segment of our program. You know, when we deal with the engrafting of the Gentiles into the culture of the Hebrew Israelites, there is much debate about these things. Uh, on one hand, you have those that are saying that uh, uh, the Gentiles will not uh, be allowed to uh, uh, do all of these things, but we can read in this book and find out that that's not the case. But what we do have to do is find out exactly what needs to be done. Everything has to be done decent and in order. So it's true that uh, uh, the uh, gospel was opened up into the Euro Gentiles. But what we have to do is let's get in this book and see what it says concerning these things. Um, I'm going to read something to you in uh, Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 5. It says, These twelve Yahshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans into you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So it's kind of ironic you hear people saying that Christ came and did all of these things for the world. Well, Christ told the disciples not to go to anybody except the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he is going to allow uh, uh, an apostle to go unto the Euro Gentiles. But what we see here is that Christ is doing things decent and in order. It must happen with the, the children first um, before uh, it can be opened up to anybody else. Um, and even when we go unto um, uh, the place where the woman wanted her, her um, um, daughter to be healed of a devil, um, he told her it's not me to take the uh, 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 food of the children and cast it to dogs. Now, he wasn't just per se calling her a dog. What he was making the statement because the Gentiles didn't have law and a dog or an animal does not have law. And but this woman said this is true. But is it also true that the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the, the, the table? So her statement and now the next statement that he said for this saying, your daughter is healed. Now, why was it according to that saying? Because that saying showed that this woman respected the order. Not just, I want to come and get something out of, 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 of this gospel and go. No, she respected the order. And that was very difficult for uh, uh, some Gentiles to do, saying that we rule over the Jews financially, but yet uh, I will accept the order that these people who uh, are my people rule over, you see. So this was a great, great step that this woman made in uh, um, uh, obeying the order that was set up. 
I'm going to read something else to you in uh, Romans chapter 2. Uh, and we're going to start this at verse 5. It says, But after your hardness and impenitent heart, treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim. And the righteous judgment lets us know that it's speaking concerning law. You cannot have judgment without law. You cannot go into a courtroom and speak to a judge uh, without dealing with laws. Um, verse 6, who will render to every man according to his deeds. And this here speaks against what we have uh, uh, heard come from some major televangelists that all of your sins, past, present, and future have already been done away with. But here, Saul, the apostle of the Gentiles, he was sent to the Gentiles. He is the one that has the, the authority to teach them. And he's saying Yahweh will render to every man according to his deeds. Uh, so, so we see right here that we're starting to have some discrepancies between the gospel that was opened up uh, unto the Gentiles and the gospel that is now being taught. Uh, verse 7, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. And we have to consider these things. Um, people don't look at it like they may be obeying unrighteousness because those things come from their pastor and their pastor is a very well-known, educated, and very rich man. But because the things that are coming from, from, from uh, uh, these teachers do not coincide with the things that are written in this book, it is unrighteousness and uh, uh, people are following this. But as it is written, if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Uh, verse 9, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Uh, now, so what we see here, that problems and all of these things will come to the Jew first. But this has given the people the belief that Yahweh has cast off the Jews because the Jews, our people, the Hebrew Israelites, are receiving that tribulation and anguish first. But it will come upon everybody else as well in its due time. Romans chapter 2 and verse 10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So this is not about respect to persons. This is decent and in order according to the setup. Verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with Elohim. For as many as have sinned without law shall also die without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Remember what I, I, I spoke of earlier, what we read earlier within this. If you are going to be judged, that means there has to be a law. Now, verse 12 says, uh, as many as have sinned without law shall die without law. Now, we automatically find more discrepancies between what's written, written in this book uh, and we, we base that upon what we hear uh, from the, the, the large uh, church organizations that put out these uh, uh, things here. We find that they are just night and day different from what is written here because this lets us know that the law cannot be nailed uh, 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 to the cross because there has to be a righteous judgment. So we have to consider some of these things as we read. Uh, verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before Elohim, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, if the law is nailed to the cross, why is the apostle of the Gentiles talking to them about the difference between being a hearer of the law and a doer of the law? What we have to understand is that the law is broken down into different categories. 
You have dietary laws, you have uh, uh, moral law, and then you have sacrificial law. Well, what we have allowed some of these televangelists to do is to group all of that law into one big pot, and that uh, uh, is a very, very bad uh, 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 thing to do when we are dealing with what's written in here. Uh, verse 14, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Now, this next verse uh, is going to give us even more clarity. Verse 15 says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when Elohim shall judge the secrets of men by Yahshua, the Mashiach, according to my gospel. So it lets you know that even though the, the Euro Gentiles were not given the law, if they walk in the righteousness of the law, then they become a law unto themselves. So we see that, that, that it was definitely an opening, but we have to be careful of, of how things are being done because what we see happening nowadays is that the, the uh, 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 church organizations have set up schools and the Euro Gentiles are over these schools and now this so-called African American is going to these uh, uh, schools not understanding that he is a Hebrew Israelite or a Jew and he's learning from the Euro Gentiles which when you read what is uh, 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 written in Romans 9 verse 4 what authorized the, the Euro Gentiles was the Jew that was presiding over them. If we go back to what we read uh, um, earlier in this uh, program, when the gospel was opened up, it was a Jew that told them what to do. Uh, let's jump to 17. Behold, you are called a Jew and rest is in the law and make your boast of Elohim. So we see the difference right there between uh, 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 the Jew versus the Gentile. And know of his will and approve the things that are more in, uh, excellent being instructed out of the law. And are confident that you yourself a, are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which have the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. You, therefore, which teacheth another, teacheth you not yourself. Uh, you that preaches a man should not steal. Do you steal? Now, where are these things written? These things go right back to the commandments of Moses. So how can these things be nailed to the cross? And he's saying you, you, you're teaching that a man should not steal. Then you can't steal. All of these go right back to that law uh, uh, that governs the children of Israel. Uh, let's go to Romans chapter 11, and I'm going to uh, uh, read verse 1 first. And it says, I say then, has Elohim cast away his people? Who is his people? Elohim forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So the apostle uh, to the Gentiles is telling them that he's an Israelite. So, and a lot of times we go by these names, well, I'm a Christian and this, and well, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Right here, the teacher of the Christians was an Israelite. And he was the one that was specifically sent to the Euro Gentiles to open up this gospel unto them. Because remember, we read in the opening, the 12 disciples were only sent to Israel. There was a special one that was sent directly to the Gentiles. And this is the one that they're supposed to listen to. Uh, now I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 13 here in Romans chapter 11. It says, for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. 
he was the one given the authority. He is the one that they're supposed to be uh, following after. He is the one that authorized them to do the things that they are able to do. Verse 14, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them, Israel, be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root you. And we can see clearly that the things that have been set up shows us that uh, uh, the Gentiles have boasted against Israel in setting up their own thing. As it is written, they being ignorant of Elohim's righteousness and going about to establish their own. Verse 19, you will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if Elohim spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Elohim. And these are the things that you tend to hear only partially within this new doctrine uh, uh, that we hear. It says, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity. Well, all we hear about is the goodness of Elohim, never the severity. On them which fail, severity. But toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you shall also be cut off. Then that clears up this whole thing about what's being taught uh, among Christian churches, that your past, future, and present sins have all been wiped away. This is the apostle to the uh, 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 Gentiles. This is where they were first called Christians in Antioch. This is the, the apostle that taught them. He says, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise you shall be caught off. But people have been taught that you cannot lose your salvation. And that does not coincide with what's written in this book. Verse 23. And they also. If they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Elohim is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? All right. And then we're going to read verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Least you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel and to the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And the fullness of the Gentiles speaks to this uh, uh, time uh, in uh, 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 this lifetime, this period that was given unto the Euro Gentiles to rule. And we know that. Blindness in part has happened to Israel during that time. But now we're starting to see uh, uh, those scales fall off our eyes. We're starting to see that Yahweh is calling preachers and teachers to speak the truth of this word and put it out there to the public. Uh, and now our people are starting to see these things. And that lets us know that we are getting uh, uh, close to the end of the fullness of the Gentiles. And the fullness of the Gentiles uh, uh, speaks to the time that they were given to rule here on this earth. Now, I'm going to read something else to you in uh, Colossians chapter 2. And I'm going to start this at verse 13. And it says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Now, this is coming into the word. But of course, what is, is taught that he's forgiving 
uh, uh, has forgiven past, present, and future. And we, uh, just thinking about that, that doesn't make sense, that you can walk any kind of way you want to walk. And the book does not justify that. Verse 14, uh, a lot of people are, are, are lost right here. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. You notice it did not say blotting out commandments. See, there are laws, statutes, and judgments. Those are three different entities. See, but when you deal with these ordinances, these ordinances were given to us with that animal sacrifice. Like we spoke of earlier, you have a dietary law, moral law, and sacrificial law. All law uh, uh, does not uh, belong in the same bucket, but what people do is group things together so that they can pull out whatever they do not like. Um, because what I find so interesting, tithing is a part of the law. The law is supposed to be nailed to the cross, but there are people are, are whole organizations that push tithing that will say that if you don't tithe, that you should be pulled out and shot. But yet the law is nailed to the cross. And that is where tithing comes from. Um, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out the way, nailing it to his cross, his torture stake. And and, and of course, that's done away with. There's no things about animal sacrifice because now there's a perfect sacrifice that he has offered up. No other sacrifice can be offered up at this time. Verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Now, we warn people about cherry-picking scriptures, about reading little bitty parts. You want to make sure that you always read enough to get the full idea about a subject. Now, if I just stop right here, which is some things that I've heard some very large televangelists do, people who have really large congregations, a lot of money, if you just stop right there, then it gives the wrong impression. The next verse says, which are a shadow of things to come. Now, of course, this popular televangelist did not read this next line. So you see how you get a different meaning. If, if I just say Mary had a little, what did Mary have? Did she have a cat, a dog, a rat? What? I did not finish the subject. I didn't fully get that out. So I leave that up to interpretation or whatever somebody's heart feels. I want to read something to you in uh, uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. See, we are, 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 are being taught things and we're talking major things organizations teaching people that your sins uh, are past, present, and future have already been wiped away. So I've, I've even heard the teaching that a person can sleep with everybody that comes through the church door and they're still going to go to heaven. They just won't get everything that they're supposed to have, but they're still going to go to heaven. That does not coincide with this book. It's openly talking about having your name blotted out of the book. So are you going to believe Christ? Or are you going to believe your preacher? You're going to have to make a decision. Uh, verse, uh, let's read uh, uh, something out of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Elohim. And the books were open and another book was open. See, so what are the books? The books are your dealings. The books are the things that you've done in your life. So it, it, it's just like accounting. The books are open and another book was open, which is the book of life. Man, and it says the dead were judged out of the things that were written in the books according to their works. So it's a balance sheet. You have the, 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 the book of life and then the books 
of all the things that you have done in your life. That's righteous judgment. And you cannot have righteous judgment without law. And this is what we uh, uh, have seen with that gospel being opened up. That gospel did not stay the same. So what we have is what has been taught or what is being taught now is not the same doctrine that uh, Paul taught the Euro Gentiles before. If we read in Acts chapter 13, we'll find that Paul taught the Euro Gentiles on the Sabbath day. Now we, we, we're hearing that the Sabbath is nailed to the cross, but somehow tithing is still valid. There's something seriously wrong with that. Um, Hebrews chapter eight, and I'm going to read um, uh, starting at verse three. It says, for every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of a necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law who serves unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, says he, that you make all things according to the pattern showed to you in the mount. Right. As it is written, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even when you talk about these holy days, we can read in Job chapter one and chapter two, that when it was time for the angels to make their uh, uh, appearance before Yahweh, Lucifer came also. Why? Because he was an angel. He had to make his appearance. So the great deception is he has taught the people on the earth. You don't have to do the things contained in the law. You don't have to make those appearances and keep the holy days. Meanwhile, he's doing it. Now, that is great deception. When you teach somebody that they don't have to do something, but then you go and do it. Uh, verse six. But now he, uh, has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So he is the mediator of this new covenant. And a lot of people say we are under this new covenant. Well, let's keep reading and see. Verse seven. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, the people, he says, behold. The days come, says Yahweh, when I will, future, will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehuda. Now, we jump down to verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. These things go directly against the teachings that are taught today. So if you're going to deal with this word, deal with it according to how it is written. That's all we have time for today. Thank you for tuning in. Shalom.